My friend Donnie Brewer is great at writing drinking songs. Almost as great as me. <laughs> this is his ode to the Michelob Ultra, a song called Skinny Beer. We're the songwriters. Hey y'all, I'm in Panama City Beach, Florida today with my good friend Donnie Brewer. Hey Don. Hey man, good to see you. Donnie and I, uh, we, we travel all over the country. We do. And do shows. Uh, me and my wife, Coley McCabe, and Donnie and his wife, Michelle, uh, uh, we have been full-time RV people True. For, uh, for a while, for the last couple years, except ours is for sale now. Oh. But Donnie and Michelle have been traveling in their RV since when? Uh, what, about four years ago? Five years yeah. ago? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've been homeless, basically. Uh, no, no, no. You have a home. Well, it wheels. just has wheels. It has wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we do a lot of, uh, we all do a lot of shows in the uh, trop rock world. Yeah. Which is uh, music that's like Jimmy Buffett. It is, but it's it's beyond that. It's really fans of songwriting, really, is what that's it right. is. That's right. I like to call it a bluebird crowd wearing Hawaiian shirts. That's true. If you've ever been to the Bluebird in Nashville, it's a songwriter yeah. show kind of thing. Yeah. It's a bluebird crown in Hawaiian shirts. It's they're, true. They're in, they're really intelligent listeners. I mean, they're That's they're, right. they're older. A lot of them. Yeah. And, and they appreciate good songwriting beyond their tropical, uh, you know, feather wearing boa paired head That's true. thing. They, they love good music and they love great songwriters and that's why we fit so well into that. That's true. I think a lot of people just assume if you're playing uh, uh, trop rock music or playing shows for Parrot Heads that you're just doing cover songs of Jimmy Buffett and it's the farthest it's, thing from the truth. It really is, yeah. We love that our fans love what we do, what we create as songwriters. So uh, so Donnie's been writing songs a long time. Now you lived around the Austin area and you played in a lot of different bands. For sure, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of damn years. I, I guess my only job really has ever been a musician. <laughs> the, the two jobs I had I got fired from for going to the beach and not coming back. So. Oh yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so it's really the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> right. So how did you come to the world of trop rock music then? You know, that's a great story because uh, I've been writing trop rock songs. I've been writing tropical themed things and drinking songs and so yeah. much. Uh, for a lot of years, I, I think we, we figured out my first uh, trop rock song I actually recorded in 1994. Really? Beach Bum, I recorded yeah. in 1994. That song's that old? It is that old. The wow. recording is that old. It's <laughs> really? Old. Yes. Wow. We used the original recording from that. But anyway. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't really know that there was a market for it, for that songwriting style or any of that. And so I just had all these songs in my pocket. And uh -huh. I played in country bands and blues bands and rock bands for so many years. And every once in a while I'd do one of those songs and to no reaction whatsoever. Right. And really only least recently, about, um, I guess it was five, six years ago, um, I was doing a kind of a songwriter show, just acoustic guitar guys, and I was playing some songs and some folks in the audience said, man, we really love your trop rock songs. And I'm like, what the hell is trop rock? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure, you should come and play for one of our Parrothead clubs. And I'm like, wait, I knew about Parrotheads, but they have clubs? What? Yeah, right. And so I really, after my first album was already released for a year, I found out about this group and, and these people that love songwriting and love great, you know, and so, and it was like the really the most honest thing for me because I had already been making this music and didn't know that people love this music and so it's really true to me and I finally found my people basically. I, I found hear my you. people. I so, know, we feel the same way. Coley yeah. and I, are, I, I did my first Parrot Head related gig in 2007 and uh, yeah when I did it it was like where have you people been all my life? Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like it because awesome. you, you can't find this this type of uh, listenership and, and dedication and people that follow you all across the planet. That's true. All across the country to go to these events to see you just because they appreciate what you're doing and it's amazing. It you is amazing. You can't find that in another genre. You just can't find it. No, it's true. It's true and the great thing is we get to do what we love. We get to write the songs that mean something to us. And uh, the song that I want you to do today is a song that's it's autobiographical. It kind of, well, yeah, kind of, well, yes, kind of. Yes. Now, so this may or may not have happened in real life, right? I, I, will, I will not divulge whether it was actually 
<laughs> completely true or not, but it's pretty damn close. I'm going to tell you that right now. I got you. <laughs> now, you wrote this song with a guy named Matt Hoggett. Is that right? Matt Hoggett. I freaking love... Who doesn't love Matt Hoggett? If you don't know Matt Hoggett, Google him. <laughs> we, we all love Matt. Matt, you know, he, he gained a lot of fame with his song that he wrote for Jimmy Buffett and everything. Right? But what a funny guy. I mean, just, just being around Matt Hoggett. It just makes you smile. It's Instantly. true. He's a he's an amazing, funny guy. So I thought when I started writing this song, I was like, "How cool would it be?" We were doing the Winnebago tapes, which featured right. a bunch of other uh, co-writers and a bunch of other singers on the album that we recorded here in this Winnebago. Right. That's here. right. Um, which, by the way, is a great album and sounds awesome. Thank you. You would not brother. believe this album was recorded right here in the motorhome in the Winnebago. Only a dumbass like me would try that, and it worked. So, but so yeah, we recorded um, this song in Goche, Mississippi, and I just thought it would be funny as hell if we had Matt Hoggett do a rap because yeah. you know he always jokes, he does his rap <laughs> things right. during his shows. Yes. He's always doing the Justin Bieber thing and the whatever, you know. It's just, and I was like, they would, it's too perfect. And he sent me some lyrics, and I was like, this is perfect. So yeah. So I, I recommend listening to, this, to the original cut, but also if you will listen to the extra skinny version, which the is extra the last skinny cut, version. Gotcha. which was just like after we had been here for six hours drinking skinny beer yeah. and cutting the song, he was like, let's do the Goche Mississippi version of this. <laughs> and that, it's ridiculous. It's, it's like a bonus track. <laughs> so it's on Donnie Brewer's project. It's called the Winnebago Tapes. Find it wherever fine music is sold. Where are you? all the digital ones and zeros go get it. All the online stores and all that stuff. Yeah. So all right, will you play Skinny Beer for us? I'd be happy to. All right, Donnie Brewer, Skinny Beer. <laughs> When I heard a voice beside me say, Congratulations! And I said, For what? Said, I'm sorry, sir. I thought you was a girl on account of all them pretty curls. And I could have swore you had a baby inside of that gut. I knew that I had to do something. Looked like I was smuggling a pumpkin. <laughs> uh, skinny bitch. Skinny beer. It's good for your waist, but it sure don't have no taste. Skinny beer, damn little skinny beer. You can count them calories, but you'll be counting the number of times you pee when you're drinking skinny beer. doctor what to do about this spare tire I got that seems to be gaining air. He said, diet and exercise. And I said, what else you got? He said, surgery will cost you a pretty penny and drugs will make you crazy. But if you really want to be skinny, my advice is just lay off that shiner box. Well, I hate to give up my porters and my stouts. But when the alternative is eating kale and working out, I'll take my skinny beer, damn no skinny beer. It's really easy to chug. That's why the ladies love that skinny beer, damn no skinny beer. You can drink them by the dozen, but it takes a case just to get you buzzing when you're drinking skinny beer, damn no skinny beer. And if you don't, have a skinny beer you can drink a actually dark beer and hide it from your wife and just put it in a skinny beer koozie that's what I do no one ever knows all right here's the, the Matt Hoggett part is Matt here no okay fine I'll do it let me tell you a little something about skinny beer getting drunker than a sailor when the coast is clear California A loves the gin and juice Want to drop a few pounds, you gotta cut it loose. I drank 20 beers at dinner last night. They made ounce cans, had me feeling alright. Got a Michelob high, but my wife is snagging. 
waistline slimming, but my pants are sagging. I used to kick back with the PBR, but the alcohol level had me feeling bizarre. Nowadays, nothing but the skinny would do. Watch me cut a little rug and a calorie or two. Well, you know what they say about guys with small hands. They don't look so small when they're holding tiny cans of that skinny man. the label or cover it up. Skinny beer, damn no skinny beer. If you choose to use it, then you can lose it. All you gotta do is find a small enough koozie when you're drinking skinny beer. Damn no skinny beer. Ticket is talking about skinny beer. Uh, uh. One time I was drinking a skinny beer and I was on the treadmill. Yeah. They owe me 62 calories. I'm just saying. The makers of that trip. Oh, yeah. It's a S K I double N Y B double E R skinny beer. It's a S K I double N Y B double E R skinny beer. It's a S K I double N Y B double E R skinny beer. Skinny Beer, written by my friend Donnie Brewer and the great Matt Hoggett. We got a couple other Matt Hoggett videos on the songwriters you need to check out as well. Now, Donnie Brewer has won 13 Trop Rock Music Association Awards, including Entertainer of the Year, three years running. He has won multiple awards and he's super talented. He travels all over the country with his wife Michelle in their Winnebago Vetra, which is also the recording studio. To find out more about Donnie, visit DonnieBrewer.com. Be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about Donnie Brewer's drinking songs. I love Skinny Beer. That's my favorite Donnie Brewer song ever. And if you want to learn all about writing songs and taking your songs to the next level, be sure to visit TomShepard.com. And we will see you all next time. We're the song.